Coming right up, a straight talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, Dr. Marcy Zwelling. You won't want to miss this discussion of the health care debate. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the director of the program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. So raise the banner, call the glory, let us join our fellow man. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Long Beach Magazine. Coastal living, city style. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. This is a very special show for us. We have an extraordinary guest who you'll meet in a second speaking on an incredibly important topic, health care. It also is the last show we are taping in our studio. This is show number 420. We will be moving next month to the facilities at California State University, Long Beach, so we're very excited about that. But we're particularly honored to have as our guest for the entire show tonight, Dr. Marcy Zwelling, who is a doctor uh, practicing in town and will tell you about her credentials in a second. But Dr. Zwelling, welcome to Straight Talk. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. We're honored to have you as our final guest in this studio. And uh, Dr. Zwelling grew up in Zanesville, Ohio. She went to Wellesley College, where she majored in economics, graduated with honors, then went to New York University uh, Medical School. She is quadruple board certified as a physician, which is very, very rare. She served on the board of trustees of the LA County Medical Association and was president of the Long Beach Medical Association. Mm -hmm. So we have an extraordinarily well-qualified expert, and we're going to speak about a field that we are all concerned with as Congress uh, debates health care reform. Uh, my interest in Dr. Swelling, who I've known about from a distance for many years, was triggered by a recent guest uh, column she wrote in the Press-Telegram, and referring to the health care legislation now pending, the headline says, legislation will increase the divide between the doctor and the patient. And uh, just give us a macro view of, uh, of your view of the legislation and the type of practice that you follow. Certainly. The legislation was initially, I think, well-intended. Congress sat down to try to make health care more affordable and more accessible. Everyone agrees that that's a good thing. But what we've got is a bill that makes it more expensive, less accessible, divides the patient and the doctor, and does nothing to take care of the health and lives of the people of this country. Wow, just let's think about that. This sounds like a cure that's worse than the disease. Oh, if you only knew. I, I lose sleep over this, Art. I lose sleep over this every night. You know, as a physician, I'm charged with making my patients day better. 
I, I really do love what I do. I'm a happy doctor because my patients and I have a relationship. When they're well, I'm well. When they're not, I'm not. And this legislation does nothing to promote health this does nothing to promote the relationship. This does nothing to promote the best in medical care, but it does everything to give us all a headache. And it's just something that needs to be stopped. We need to start over and think about this rationally and do one thing at a time. You know, when my patients come to my office art, they can come with a list of problems that goes from here to China. I take care of them one at a time because what you do on Monday could affect what happens on Tuesday. It's, th th we all know that, that's life. It's a holistic approach. A holistic approach, I, you have to deal with the whole patient. But of course, because life is a whole thing. It, it's, it, you cannot divide our lives. We are whole human beings. You think, absolutely. <laughs> so when you have legislation that, that does nothing to promote health, but does everything to basically strip my patients' wallets, because premiums go, will go up, their taxes will go up, they won't be able to find doctors. You know, the most telling thing happened on the day that the Senate passed their legislation. That was Christmas Eve. And you would think that physicians and patients would be home with their families doing whatever we do over the holidays. My email, my phone went crazy. Because everyone realized on that date, oh my goodness, this, must, this might come to pass. And what happened was doctors wanted to know, Dr. Zwelling, what, tell me again about your practice because you know my patients come to me and they, they pay for my care. I don't ask an insurance company or the government permission to do what I think my patients need. We do what's right. We do it then. We don't wait for somebody, you know, 100 so miles no away. So no committee has to approve Precisely. The medical treatment you give to your patients. Precisely. You decide. Absolutely. With the patient and their family. You know, it, it is, there, there are more people than myself involved in the decision, of course, but it certainly isn't the government. And that door to my office is closed. The government doesn't belong in that room. There's no room for them. You know, I, let me just paraphrase. I'm a professor and have been for 35 years, and when you go into your classroom, it's you and your students. Absolutely. There's no government agency Absolutely. walking in. And you give your students what they need individually. There is no, you can tell me absolutely, with absolute certainty, that there were no two students who were exactly the same. I know that. None of my patients are the same. So you saw what happened, for instance, when the government came out with their new edict on mammograms. I, I mean, my phone went crazy. Well, not every woman at the age of 40 must have a mammogram that day. Uh, th that's ludicrous. <laughs> Nor should we say that they shouldn't have a mammogram. When a patient comes to your office, you deal with that patient with their problems. There certainly are recommendations, and there's data that helps us make those decisions. But there's no one solution, one size fits are all. Are you kidding? Absolutely not. And yet, not. when you get regulations, you, you have to come up with, with parameters and things. Precisely. Precisely. So, 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 the, so the essence of what you're saying, as I hear you, is that we must preserve that patient-doctor relationship and not permit a system that attenuates or destroys it. You're right. The most valuable thing, the most valuable piece that we have in our healthcare system is that relationship. Without it, you can't get good care. You cannot. The relationship and that conversation, the fact that the patient can come to me and say, this is what I want, this is what I need, and I can ask them questions and we can speak honest, honestly and there's trust. That has to be there. In the next segment, we will ask this extraordinary doctor, how do we get there? Stay tuned.